Ever found yourself wondering how Jeff Bezos manages his money while you're struggling with the last bit of your monthly paycheck? Well, you're not alone. Let's face it, we're living in a world where billionaires are popping up like daisies. And the rest of us? Well, we're just trying to keep our bank accounts from diving into the negatives. But here's the kicker. Saving money isn't an exclusive club for the rich and the famous. It's an art, a science, and a little bit of a guessing game that we all get to participate in. So, whether you're counting coins to buy that much-needed coffee or doggedly dodging debt, we've got something that might just turn your financial frown upside down. Fear not, my financially frustrated friends, because today we're going to crack the code of saving money. Forget the piggy bank and the old-school savings account. It's time to get creative. Our financial journey today takes a detour into the world of unconventional, yet rewarding saving strategies. Let's dive into the first three tips that will make your saving venture more of a fun game than a monotonous chore. Picture this, you're playing a real-life version of a treasure hunt. Only this time, the treasure is the money you've saved. That's right, gamifying your savings can add a fun twist to the mundane task of stashing away those extra dollars. Create challenges, set rewards, and watch your savings grow as you win this game of financial health. Next, we're taking a stroll down the less-traveled road of experience over material possessions. Think about it, that new gadget might give you a temporary high, but the memories from a well-planned vacation last a lifetime. And the best part? You can save a lot more by investing in experiences. So the next time you're about to splurge on that shiny new toy, consider swapping it for an unforgettable experience instead. Finally, let's talk about the art of spend to save. Now you might be thinking, isn't that the exact opposite of saving? Well, not quite. There are certain smart investments that can save you a lot more in the long run. For instance, energy efficient appliances might cost more upfront, but they'll save you a bundle on your utility bills over time or take a gym membership, which might seem like a big expense now, but think about the medical bills you're avoiding by staying fit and healthy. And that, my friends, is how you make saving fun. But wait, there's more. Stick around as we continue our journey into the world of personal finance, where we'll bust some myths, tackle some brain-boggling psychology, and find a friend in finance. Stay tuned and keep saving. And if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more money-saving tips and tricks. Ah, the infamous latte factor. Many say that skipping that daily Starbucks will make you a millionaire. But is it really that simple? Picture this, you're shuffling through your day and your caffeine cravings kick in. There's that voice whispering, get that latte, you deserve it. But then there's another voice, louder, more judgmental, reminding you of the latte factor. That theory that your daily $5 latte could be your ticket to millionaire status, if only you'd save it instead. Sure, small savings can add up. If you're spending $5 a day on a latte, that's $35 a week, around $150 a month, and about $1,800 a year over a decade, that's a whopping $18,000. And if you were to invest that amount each year with an average return of 7%, in 30 years, you'd have close to $200,000. That's not chump change. But here's the thing. Life isn't just about the end game. It's about the journey too. It's about those small pleasures that make the grind worthwhile. That daily latte might be the little luxury that keeps you sane in a world that often feels like it's spinning out of control. It might be the warm, comforting ritual that starts your day on the right note, or the afternoon pick-me-up that gets you over the hump. The key isn't to deprive yourself of all life's little joys in the name of saving, but to strike a balance. Maybe you could cut back to a couple of lattes a week, or maybe you could find a cheaper alternative that you enjoy just as much. The real latte factor is about mindful spending, not total deprivation. It's about understanding where your money is going and making conscious choices that align with your financial goals and your happiness. So go ahead, enjoy that latte, but remember, moderation is key. Ever wondered why that new pair of shoes feels so good? Well, turns out your brain has a lot to do with it. You see, when we make a purchase, especially something we've been eyeing for a while, our brain releases dopamine a feel-good chemical that creates a natural high. This is what we often refer to as retail therapy. It's a real thing, folks, and it's why shopping can feel so darn satisfying. Here's the twist, though. This dopamine rush can be a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it can make us feel great, but on the other hand, it can lead us to make impulse purchases that aren't exactly friendly to our bank accounts. Understanding this psychological aspect of spending can be a game-changer when it comes to saving money. So, how do we resist these urges? 
It starts with awareness. The next time you're about to make a purchase, take a moment to reflect. Ask yourself, do I really need this? Or is it just that dopamine talking? By acknowledging this, you're already one step ahead in controlling your spending habits. Another strategy is to set a cooling off period. If you see something you want, wait 24 hours before buying it. This gives your brain time to come down from that dopamine high and make a more rational decision. Lastly, try to find other activities that trigger a dopamine release. This could be anything from exercise to spending time with loved ones or even indulging in a hobby. By finding other sources of happiness, you can reduce the need to rely on shopping for that dopamine hit. Remember your brain might be wired for instant gratification, but it can also be trained to enjoy the satisfaction of saving. It's about finding a balance and knowing when to splurge and when to save. So next time you're about to splurge, take a moment and ask yourself, is it the dopamine talking? Understanding your brain's role in spending is a powerful tool in your arsenal to save money and achieve financial freedom. So keep these tips in mind and happy saving. Who said finance has to be a solitary journey? Let's make it a party, because in the world of personal finance, the more, the merrier. Who knew finance could be social, right? But it's true, having a community around you can make a world of difference. Let's start with the basics, accountability. If you're trying to lose weight, you might enlist a gym buddy. If you're trying to learn a new language, you might join a class or a club. So why not do the same with finance? Find a friend, a family member, or even a work colleague who's also looking to save and make a pact. You can share your goals, your progress, and your challenges. When you're tempted to splurge on that designer handbag or the latest tech gadget, your finance friend can help keep you on track. And don't stop at just one. Why not start a savings challenge with a group of friends? You can all put in the same amount each week and see who can reach their goal first. Not only will this add a fun, competitive element to your savings journey, but it'll also give you a support network of people who understand what you're going through. But what if you don't have anyone in your immediate circle who's interested in personal finance? The good news is, in this digital age, you're not limited to your geographical location. There are countless online communities and forums where like-minded individuals are sharing their finance journeys. You can find people who are in the same boat as you, swap tips, and learn from each other's experiences. Remember, it's not about who saves the most or who reaches their goal the fastest. It's about encouraging each other, celebrating small victories, and turning what can often be a daunting task into a fun, collaborative effort. So don't go it alone. Take the leap, grab a friend, and let's get saving. After all, they say two heads are better than one, and when it comes to finance, that couldn't be more true. So, grab a friend and let's get saving. Well folks, we've had quite a journey today. From busting myths to understanding our brains, we've tackled personal finance like never before. We've debunked the infamous latte factor, proving that small pleasures aren't the enemy of your savings. We've dived into the psychology of spending, unearthing the emotional triggers and social pressures that can complicate our financial decisions. And remember, you're not alone in this journey. We've highlighted the importance of community and collaboration in achieving financial goals. So let's keep this conversation going. Share your unique money-saving tips, your challenges, and your successes. Let's learn from each other. And together, build a community that saves together. Remember, the path to financial freedom starts with one small step. So, what's your first step going to be? Will you be reevaluating your budget or perhaps finding an accountability partner? It is, remember that every step you take brings you one step closer to financial freedom. Before we wrap up, if you found this video helpful and informative, please hit the like button. And if you want to stay updated on more financial tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're here to support you on your journey to financial success.